Welcome to the Entrepreneur Motivation Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Bello, and I've got Nathan Gavundian. Did I pronounce that right? <laughs> yep, you got it. And it's, yep. dude, that W is so tricky though, because I, like I said, I wanted to pronounce it Gawanjin or like, I'm sure you get that a lot, right? People try to just pronounce your name. Yeah, I've, I've gotten to the point where I just, I, I try not to have them go through that. That you whole just say process of or trying, I'm just like, <laughs> I'll just, let me just help you off the bat here. I can't even imagine like the person <laughs> whose job it is to like read names as you like go across the stage to graduate or, you know, in high school or whatever. It's like, they probably had to practice it a million times and they're like, Hey, what's your name before I just announce it. But um, anyway, Nathan, it's awesome yeah. to have you on the show, man. I'm really excited just to Happy talk to about here. what you're up, what you're working on, what you're up to next. And I think today we're going to talk a lot about staying focused and achieving your goals, which it's always great to have a friendly reminder. I think I've kind of dialed it in for myself a little bit for those listening though. Maybe mm -hmm. some people are having shiny object syndrome and stuff like that. So let's definitely help them out today. But if you want to go ahead and introduce yourself real quick, who is Nathan? Yeah. Yeah. So I was born and raised in California. I'm um, just the Bay area. Um, I've always just been passionate about, uh, freedom and doing what you love. And, uh, so I found myself in the entrepreneurial route. I, uh, went to college for a little while and then kind of faded out just because I, I found that it wasn't getting me where I needed to go, at least at that time. Yeah. And, um, uh, so again, yeah, back to the entrepreneurial route. I just started a couple of businesses. I have one that's a, just a media business. And so we're uh, mostly a little more religious on the religious side of things. So we just help people, um, with different things as far as that goes. And then just, a it's a media, media company. And the other one is what my brother and I just started. And that's with our book that we just launched this past week. And so we're, again, we're just in the, the getting the footwork down. Um, but we're, we're excited just to keep pushing and keep on the entrepreneurial path. We're excited. So it's been it's been, it's been a blast so far and looking forward to, to many more great Very times cool. and, and, and tough times too. So, yeah, for sure. It's just, I think it's all about just doing stuff that's fun and lights you up in general, the creative side. I just had a guest on my show. I was talking to you right before you, and she was saying entrepreneurs are able to tap into the creativity that a lot of times you don't get to do in a corporate job, or maybe even like an institutional uh, facility, like school, you know, you have to think a certain way you get a test and you only have four questions, you know, four answer choices. And one of those is right according to the class and the professor. And I mean, you could say some things like math, you know, calculus, there's going to be a right answer. But for some other things, it's like really kind of depends on your subjective um, analysis of like how that question is being asked and stuff. So I never found that to be like yeah. a super great environment for being creative. So I love uh, the whole entrepreneurship thing. And I know, like you said, it's just a journey and it's not always ups and there's going to be some downs as well, but you guys are on that path and you know, you're kind of in the, the thick of it, having fun just every day, showing up and doing what you can do. So great to have you once again on here. That's what it is. So with all the things you've got going on, all the things that you've worked on, I mean, how do you stay focused? Like what, what have you done to hone in on your goals and really just stay on track? Yeah. So when I was younger, I studied a lot of, I'm not sure, well, I'm sure you've heard of him, but Bob Proctor's stuff. Yep. And, uh, and he, he quotes, I think it's Earl Nightingale in one of his, one of his podcasts or audio books or something. I forget exactly what it was, but he talks about having five things just like for that day. So we've picked five things that you can do that day. And if basically like just focus on that one thing, one thing at a time, when you finish the first thing, go to the second thing, but don't think about the third thing until you finished the second and don't think about the second until you finish the first. And so that's what kind of helps me is I'll, at the beginning of the day, I'll create like a little, little to-do list, so to speak, like a top five kind of thing. And um, just focusing on one thing at a time. Um, I have a very simple mind. I, I have a hard time multitasking when I think about multiple things at a time, it kind of throws me off. And so when I just focus and hone in on that one thing at a time, I'm able to accomplish a lot more. That's a really so that, great that's, tip. Yeah, that's kind of how I do it. Yeah, that's, that's really good. I know Andy Frisella talks about the power list. If you ever heard of that, you know, you've got five things, you either mm -hmm. win the day or you lose the day, depending on if you knock them all out. But what you said there about focusing one at a time, I think that's the hardest thing for many people, you know, because we're thinking shiny object syndrome, we got a million different ideas. We kind of want to do this, but we kind of want to do that, right? So 
focusing one at a time. I think that's the key. Like, let me just look at this first thing and then go to the second and then the third, because I, I have heard this and I do believe it that multitasking is a myth. I mean, we can do a little bit of multitasking. Like I can throw the ball for mm -hmm. my dog and listen to a podcast because I'm not really thinking about throwing the ball, but can I listen to a podcast and write an email? Like it starts to get very difficult, right? So multitasking is a myth. Yeah. Focus on one thing at a time for everyone listening. Totally. So what yeah, else can we do to stay focused? I, I think. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, uh, speaking to the shiny object um, syndrome or whatever you want to call it, you know, it's, um, I think the reason why I do that is because I have that syndrome so bad. Like I have to you make have that to. list or else I'll, I'll like go all over the place. Cause like ideas come and go, you know what I mean? Like they, as an entrepreneur, you think of so many different things and you have so many creative ideas. You just got to figure out which one is the most important. And so that's, yeah, just recognizing that you have the shiny object syndrome. I think everyone does to some degree for I sure. Think so yeah. And so that, that just, that helps me. And then, um, something else, um, I do is just, identifying what the main goal is behind all the other ideas that are coming into my head and focusing on that and just feeling that not just mentally think, thinking it, but feeling it, allowing it to kind of just, just all over, just you just feel it. You know what I mean? Um, and so that helps me stay, stay focused on that as well. Have you read the book, The The One Thing by Gary Keller and Jay Papasan? I have not. I need to look that one up. That one's a really good book, but it sounds like you've already got it dialed in where that book, it'll force you to ask yourself, you know, what's the one thing I can work on such that everything else is unnecessary or something along those lines, I forget. Mm. But the idea is there may be one thing, there's likely one thing. If we have a list of 20 things to do, what's the one thing you can do that would like automatically knock five other things off the list? Cause sometimes we create like mini goals, you know, we're like, I want to yeah. do all these things, but if you really do that one thing, a lot of those other goals just fall off the list because they're no longer important or they're kind of covered in that other big goal, if that makes sense. So focusing on and feeling that big vision and knocking that one task out that may be worth five other little things in a way. So it sounds like you've already got that dialed in, but for those listening, that's a good book that helped me focus because before I was just all over the place trying too many different things. And every day I'd wake up and it was like, I was working on a different project, you know? Definitely. Yeah. I need to look that one up. I mean, you can always learn more, so I can always perfect the, <laughs> what, what I already have worked on for sure. Um, but one book that helped me was think and grow rich actually by Napoleon Hill. Um, for sure. That one, just when he talks about the definite chief aim, probably a similar, similar to what that book speaks on, but just a different angle. So, yeah, that's a classic. And when you're writing your goals down, are you just writing it on like a sticky note or in, in your notebook, or is there a certain format that you're using or does it kind of just vary based on what you have available in front of you? Um, it varies at times, but most of the time it's on my phone. I just use notes. Okay. I have a little, like a, it's, I, it's a living, a living document, so to speak, but uh, just cause it, I add and take stuff away, just whatever. It's just always, always changing as things are accomplished. So, yeah, the good thing about that too, is like everyone always has their phone with them. So if you write it down on a piece of paper and then you're, you're gone all day or whatever, like you, you don't know what's on that list. And so at least with the phone, you can pull it up and reference it throughout the day, no matter where you're at. So I like that idea for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, sometimes it is paper though. Like ideas are, I'm trying to remember who said this. I think it was also the time when I was studying Bob Proctor's stuff, but um, someone, I forget exactly, but they said ideas are slippery. And so <laughs> as soon as it comes, I try to write it down wherever it is. If it's a napkin, a paper towel, like wherever it is, like yeah. my hand, whatever I have available to me, I write it down so I don't forget it. And then when I do have access to my phone or it's charged again or whatever it be, then I transfer it to the, the usual place where I know it'll, where I know I'll find it. So. For sure. And then even like Asana, or sometimes I'll email it to myself because I have a rule in my inbox where emails that come from myself will get starred, which immediately get jumped to the top of the whole thing. So if I have like a hundred unread emails, which, you know, there's so many 
newsletters and FYI and you're copying on an email. And like, if you don't check your email in a day or two, which sometimes I'm guilty of, it's very easy to be overwhelmed, but I have rules in place where emails jump to the top. So I know that out of the 78 unread emails, there's like four that are actually critical time sensitive type stuff or for myself. And so when I check my email later, like after I get home from the gym, I'll see my reminder to myself. And then I can either manually drop that in Asana or just like do it right away and then delete it or whatever. So just whatever system works for you. Um, I think it's just important that you do something because if you're not tracking it at all, that's where you get in trouble, right? If you're just trying to remember it, like you said, ideas are slippery. They come and go. If you don't note that, th- that thing down, it's going to go out the other you know, side of your mind and you're going to lose it. Yeah. Then someone else will grab it and they'll <laughs> <laughs> They're gonna grab solve, it and take solve it. the problem. And Oh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Well, so whenever you're waking up and you're coming up with these ideas, the five tasks for the day, are they pretty similar? Like, do you have the five, like five things that you're kind of working on, you know, outreach and this and that, or do they really vary based on like, okay, I knocked these big dominoes over yesterday. Today, I'm going to, I'm going to do a little bit different stuff. Yeah, I I think most of the time, um, well, what I do is I have different categories, so to speak, and, and what one of those is, so there's physical, there's intellectual, there's social, there's the different things. And I'll usually, I usually try to balance it out. So I'm working on something um, with the physical side of things like either nutrition or workout plan or something. And then I'll work on something with uh, my, a certain business, and then I'll have something with a certain other business, but it's, it's usually, I try to divide it like that. That way mm-hmm. I'm not kind of just going all one-sided and I just, I have the, the well-rounded balance, so to speak. That's what I've found to be pretty, uh, pretty helpful, at least for me. Yeah, for sure. It's, it's crazy because you, you do something and then you stack something new and then you continue to add where it's almost like you're starting to juggle more and more. Like for those who just start the entrepreneur space, maybe they start waking up early and meditating for 10 minutes, for example, and then it evolves into a whole morning routine and a workout ritual and maybe affirmations and drinking a gallon of water. I noticed this for myself. Like I'm tracking so many things on a daily basis that to someone who's never done any of that, it looks superhuman almost where they're like, Oh my God, like you do so many things. How do you manage it all? But it all started with, let me just wake up and do a five minute morning routine. And then it evolved into the hour morning routine. And now it's like the first three hours of my day are dedicated to like self-care, personal development, Um, you know, massages, chiropractor appointments, like those types of things where I'm really trying to just dial everything in. And um, Mm -hmm. that way, the rest of the day, I can, I can think creatively and just go with the flow in a way because I'm not overthinking everything, if that makes sense. Like I know what I kind of need to do. The appointments are on my calendar and I've poured into myself. So now I can pour into others almost, you know? Totally. Yeah. But I guess it's different for everyone. You know, maybe if you're a morning person, You can do your stuff in the morning. If you're not, you don't have to necessarily wake up at 5 a.m. and doing a morning routine. You could do an evening routine, like 6 p.m. can be your wind down time where you do what other people do in their morning routines, you know? Yeah, I agree. I think it's the biggest thing is just figuring out what works, what works for you and what, uh, I don't don't know, find your happy place, so to speak. Yeah, I I love that. Find your happy place. And and the thing too with that is it takes like a, a little bit of experimentation. You have to I guess if you're working full time, it gets a little tough because, you know, you you can't really, I saw someone commented that on one of the posts I had on Instagram about these things will change your life about a morning routine. And I think it was either that or the post about the miracle morning by Hal Elrod, which I follow. If you've ever read that book Uh in this one guy's like, well, I have to be at work at 4.30 AM. And I'm like, I kind of gave him a little bit of tough love and I I did a little winky face and I was like, wake up at four o'clock, you know, wake up 30 minutes earlier, no matter what time you wake up at all it takes is waking up 30 minutes earlier, you know? Yeah. Maybe you have to be at work at four 30 and someone else doesn't have to be at work until eight, but you still wake up at a certain time and go to bed at a certain time to accommodate that schedule. Right. So it was kind of like a, Hey, you know, I know you're trying to come up with an excuse right now, but I'm not listening to it because it's not valid. It's a, it's a myth. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. There's always, there's always something you can, you can throw out there as a, as an excuse, even if, I mean, even if you don't work at four 30, I mean, four 30, I, that's pretty early. On, the, on the scale of excuses. That one's, that one's all right, but, but still. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That one gets weighted something. a little more heavily than like, Oh, you know, I have, I have something at nine o'clock. I'm like, come on, you know, you, you can wake up and do something yeah. before that. 
Um, but you're right. 4.30 is a pretty yeah, early yeah. thing, but it's all relative, right? You know, someone else probably is working all totally. night. Totally. Like when do they do their routine before yeah. they go to work? Maybe they go to work at 10 p.m. and they don't get home until 6 a.m. Yeah. Yeah. It just depends, I guess, on uh, if you're more in love with the person you are or you are currently or the person you're, you want to become. It's just kind of what you got to decide as a, yeah. I mean, as a person, but as an entrepreneur, especially. And how bad do you want it too? Because I mean, sometimes I think the the biggest opponent to growth is like comfort. You know, you get comfortable oh, yeah. and you sleep in a little bit and you don't really do the things that got you to where you are. And in that way, you kind of start to stagnate or even go backwards, which is, I mean, just to be completely honest, that's where I feel like I am. I'm like a little bit comfortable. I'm not doing a lot, a lot of the things that I did to get me here. And I've seen a little bit of a plateau in a way where I'm like, you know, okay, things aren't amazing, but they're mm -hmm. not bad. So how do I push myself to get to that next level when where I'm at is like not too bad, you know, you ever feel that way? Or and if you do, how do you ever overcome that? Totally. Yeah. I, I feel that from time to time for sure. Um, just like you said, comfort's the enemy of progress. And I don't think anyone ever really enjoys, even those that are super good, at how keep pushing, keep pushing, keep moving forward. Uh, I don't think they ever really enjoy that portion of time when they're like just struggling, hardcore struggling. No one ever I does. I, I definitely, maybe no, David Goggins. No. <laughs> He's Actually, like, I love yeah, this. you know, maybe. <laughs> yeah, that might be the one exception right there. But, um, but yeah, so it's just a matter of, I guess, what helps me is focusing on the outcome versus that specific moment of, man, I, I am, I want to give up so bad right now. I don't, I want to lay in bed. I, I don't want to get up. I don't want to go to the gym. Like it's too cold outside. It's, it's just a matter of like, for me, focusing on the end, kind of like what Stephen Covey said with like beginning with the end in mind. Yeah. That that's what pulls me through. And just thinking of, okay, after I do this, it's going to feel so good, but I just so got to do it. I just got to push myself through it. That's what that's, usually helps me. That's a great idea. Or that's a great thought just to think through. I mean, even working out, I've heard it said that, you know, even on the days you don't want to go or it's cold outside or you're tired. Most times I'd say 98% of the time you go to the gym and afterwards you're like, I feel amazing. I'm so glad that I came. Maybe there's that little percentage where you're like, I still wish I didn't come. You know, this was just terrible. I was already sore. I didn't want to come. But in most cases, whenever you do show up and you go through the motions, and you at least showed up. You hear that quote, you know, showing up is half the battle type thing. I truly believe that because opportunities are missed. If you don't show up, if you skip, if you sleep in, you're missing out on the opportunity because you're not even there in the room versus if you at least show up. Yeah, that's half the battle. But the other half is actually getting a little bit better, shaking some hands, making those connections, putting yourself out there, you know, being on podcasts like we are right now. Uh, so I love that. Focus on the outcome, not on the actual little activities that maybe you dislike. Like just imagine that outcome. Where are you going to be? How's it going to feel when you finish this task that maybe you don't want to do? And that'll help you push through. Great advice. Thanks. Yeah, it's, it's real. <laughs> it is real. <laughs> Super real. So what's something that you're maybe struggling with right now? Are you guys, you, you said you and your brother wrote this book and you're obviously trying to uh, market it and get it out there into the world. Uh, is there something that kind of stands out whenever you think of like a challenge that you guys are dealing with right now? Is it just how do you re reach it to more people? Is that like the biggest thing you guys are working on right now? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, that's definitely something we think about a lot and we we've been creating some business plans um, with that goal in mind. Um, one of the biggest things we're working on right now, at least obstacles we're trying to overcome is um, just, just the, our youth. So my, my brother's 19, I'm 22. And so just in a lot of, in a lot of ways, people look at you differently. If you're super young, trying to do something big, you know what I mean? And it's, and that's one of the big obstacles we're trying to overcome. Uh, and that's a lot of, that's just mindset, not letting that pull us down. And yeah. most of the time it does. And of course there's where nobody's perfect. There's always those occasions where it's like, Oh, I, I feel really down right now, but then you just got to bounce back. And so that's one of the obstacles we're overcoming as far as um, the business itself, we're currently designing, working on some, some, uh, some online courses and classes that 
young people can take so they can figure out um, exactly what they're passionate about, where kind of their route. Um, so as far as an obstacle in the business, that's what we're, we're working on right now, just figuring out the logistics of all of that and, and the, the exact, the things that helped us and how we want to convey that. Um, and so we're just, just working on the, the little goals to get to that, that bigger one right now. And just pushing through because I mean, it'd be easy to just say, oh, cool. It's a bestseller, like moving on, but <laughs> there's the, the next step we got to hit. So got to go back into the, the terror barrier as Bob Proctor calls it. The terror barrier. That's one thing that I hear a lot of people. I mean, it's, it's a tough objection to overcome in a way, or like, I guess it gets into your head, even people who get into real estate, like I'm in real estate and you hear about people who become investors or even real estate agents. And they're like 18 and it, it is like a mental thing, but also there is some truth to that. Cause I guess I just think like my dad sold new homes and he's like, almost 70 now. So there's that inherent trust, like people associate older age with wisdom and he's friendly and he's got some wrinkles. Like visually, you seem like you could trust that person a little more. Not that you can't trust someone who's young, but I know a lot of people are like, well, I'm 18. Why is someone who's 60 going to actually sell their house with me? They don't think that I've, I've lived long enough to know, you know, they bought like five houses in their whole life. And here I just got my, my real estate license or whatever. So I think that you're, there is some validity to it. It is a lot of mental like barrier of thinking I'm too young, which, you, which it sounds like you're overcoming. But I think that there is a little bit of that. Like you may have to sell yourself a little more to those skeptical people who are like, yeah, these guys are too young. They're just getting started. You know, they haven't, they haven't like lost yet or got a knockdown. You know, you hear the, the pessimistic. I think there's a lot of like pessimism yeah. associated with old age. And I get it too. Cause like I'm 31 now and I've had a, a few losses, a few failures, a few ideas that I tried that didn't work out. And I, I'm trying not to be the little grumpy old man, like, man, I tried that before it didn't work. You know, it's not going to work for you. <laughs> I, I love having that young optimism of just like anything's possible. We have our whole life ahead of us. So I love that energy about you guys. Uh, but yeah, I mean, keep up the good work on that. You know, for anyone listening right now, who's young or even young in their entrepreneurial journey, there's people who still don't feel confident and they're like 45, 50. I have, I've had people message me and they're like, you know, I still haven't taken that leap from the corporate world. I'm stuck in this job, you know, it pays pretty good. I'm, I'm very scared to go out on my own. So in a way, I feel like they're kind of young in terms of their business, their entrepreneurship, taking the reins of their life type thing, you know? So it doesn't matter. Age is just a number. Like you said, if you're getting better every day, you know, and you're adding value, how young or how old you are, it's really not really that relevant. Definitely. No, I like what you said. There is, there is definitely some, um, I don't know, some, some unspoken trust when someone, when someone has a little bit more, a little more experience, a little bit more, uh, a little more seasoned, so to speak, yes. you know what I mean? Or even the perception, and, uh, just cause like they could be very yeah. new doing that. My dad was like crushing it, selling new homes because people expect it. They're like, he must know what he's talking about. He must've been here for 10 years when he had just started like two months before. Yeah. yeah I mean, yeah, it, it works. And that's, that is, again, that's one thing like, yeah, we're, st we're still working on that. We still realize, we, we realize we got a lot to learn. We got a lot, got a long journey ahead of us and we're just, just here for the ride. For so. sure. And then one more funny thing that I just want to add, cause I'm always on these book club calls and stuff with other uh, mentors and people who I've met through my real estate networking and space, but I'm on this book club call and I'm the youngest person by far. Like I think everyone else is like 40, 50, 60. There's just three or four other people who meet and they've been in the business for years. You know, one guy like owns an inspection company. One person does mortgages for home loans. And the other is like a top real estate br uh, broker and agent all in the Houston area. And it's funny because, you know, they, wow. one of them does admit, he's like, you know, we see you, Chris, and we're, we're kind of like a little bit jealous sometimes that you're trying to work four hours a week, you know, like the four hour work week and all this stuff. And you're trying to do things differently. Yeah, and yeah. you didn't have to go through what we did of like door knocking and cold calling. Like I never did any of that stuff. And I'm still seeing success because of social media, technology, attraction, marketing. And so he has he, this one guy I'm thinking of has admitted, you know, part of me is a little bit jealous that you didn't have to go through what I did, but it, I see that it's working. So like, I'm kind of happy. I'm happy for you, but I'm also a little bit jealous because I shouldn't expect you to go through the motions that I went through because it's a different world that we live in today, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's a great example. 
Yeah. Cause I'm like, dude, door knocking and cold calling. Like no one does that. I can just make an Instagram reel and three people will DM me. Someone will schedule a zoom call through my calendar. Like, you know, like it's 2021 get with the times. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Don't you have to leave your living room. Yeah. So it really just depends on what's your vision. What, what do you enjoy doing? And I think we kind of talked about that earlier, like tapping into your creative side and like what you're passionate about. That's where the magic really happens instead of, yeah, you got to push yourself outside your comfort zone. But if you're trying to force yourself to do things that other people say you should do, even though you can be successful another way, I don't see what's wrong with that, you know, kind of following what you enjoy and also what's working. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. And that's one thing that actually that with experience comes like because they've tried things because they've seen, okay, this doesn't work. This does like they have more of that, that knowledge of, okay, what's working type, yeah. type of thing, like what you mentioned just now. And that's kind of, that kind of goes along with the whole experience thing. Cause obviously I know my parents are always like, well, we're older, therefore wiser. And I always like to think, no, I've been smarter than y'all for a while. Like, I love you guys, but come on, <laughs> you couldn't help me with homework in like sixth grade, you know, but it, it is true. There is something to be said for wisdom and, and age. Like, yes, they have seen more stuff. Older people have been here longer. They've seen the world change. Uh, so I think that there is a little bit of validity to that. We have so much, you and I have so much information at our fingertips that they didn't have. You know, like I can't imagine going to a library and having to like punch card system to find a book when you can just ask Alexa or Siri for an answer. I don't have to look at the weather. I'm just like, Hey, what's the weather? And I, and I get to hear the, the whole forecast, right? It's a different world. Yeah. It's, it's totally different. It's totally, yeah. The technology is just insane. Just got to figure out how to use the tools that we have. That's the, I think that's one of the, one of the biggest things with, uh, at least with, with education is just figuring out, okay, what the, what's the best route? How do I learn these tools that'll get me to where I need to be? Yeah. Speaking of tools, do you have anything in particular that you use on a daily basis to manage all your goals or activities? I'd love to hear any software or tools that you guys are using right now. Um, I use just your standard Google calendar um, for usually I'll do like a weekly, weekly planning, um, usually Sunday afternoons. Okay. Is when I find that it's the best time for me, just kind of over overview of the whole week put in what I have, like the different appointments and whatnot. Um, so yeah, Google Calendar is good. Um, obviously just social media and stuff, just with the business. As far as personal stuff, just just good, good clean, solid music to, to motivate. That's what, uh, that's what I like. I like a lot of soundtrack, that helps me. Cool, sounds good. Yeah, I mean, Google Calendar is one of those simple but very effective things that I've, I've used for a while now, maybe at least a year or two. I think I really adopted it a year or so ago. I had tried using the Apple calendar on the iPhone and it just was never really, it didn't check all the boxes as easily. And there's not an easy way. Like I have a PC, so I couldn't pull up a calendar on my computer. So Google calendar is amazing because they have the app. You can open it up on your computer. You can filter it by three days, four days, like week, month, quarter. I don't know. There's so many different options, right? Yeah. Color coded. I use the color code a lot just so I can know, okay, this is, this is a, a family thing. Okay. This is, this is a, a business thing. This is a, this business thing. There's like different colors for different things. I love it so much. Yeah. I have the same thing. I'm trying to figure out my ideal colors. I'm like, Hey, if I'm out of town, it's going to be gray. So no one can book me. It says busy. Uh, if it's like a workout or personal appointment, I've been putting it as orange just to like remind me this is not really business or mission critical. It's like more for myself development. Um, and then other, everything else is kind of blue. I'm like, or maybe green might be like an intro call with a client. Like, Hey, this is a potential money-making call revenue generating activity. Uh, but still I haven't been super yeah. consistent with my color coding, but I think the idea here is that all that matters is that you're, you're working on it and you're being intentional somewhat like the colors can change, but the fact that you're just tracking things yeah. and you're at least planning once a week, I mean, that's really what matters. Yeah. Exactly. And it really just goes back to finding what works best for, for you as an individual, I think, because some people are kind of OCD about the colors and that's, that's kind of a little more me. I have that. I just super particular about it. Yep. I don't know why, <laughs> um, but then for other people, it doesn't, I mean, that doesn't have to be that way. And they're just as effective. It's not more effective. So it just finds, just depends on what works, you know? 
Yeah. And then one tip I would say too, is I, I, I used to do this. And so I would say not to do what I'm about to tell you that I used to do, but I, I was sharing screens with a friend earlier and I saw his calendar was just like 50 different colors on just today. So many different meetings, like no blank space at all. And I feel like if you, if you put too many things on there, it, you end up not getting them all done. And then you just become overwhelmed. Like I used to have everything like six to 7 a.m. morning routine, seven to seven thirty breakfast, like eight to nine workout. And I kind of removed most of those things. I still put them in occasionally, but like, I don't need to know five minutes here, like restroom break before the gym or like 10 minutes to shower. It just becomes like, you're thinking about too many things. What I just do is I leave mostly blank space and I only put meetings like our call. I'll put the gym on there and I'll add a little bit of buffer, but like my calendar for the most part is actually very bare. There's a lot of openings in there so that I can work on the bigger picture stuff, brainstorming. Cause if you're just in one meeting to another back to back and you have no space for yourself, I feel like you're not going to have time to prepare between calls, you know? Definitely. And it's hard to think too, for me, like when I have back to back to back to back things during the day, I just don't, I have no time to just debrief in my head of, okay, how was that meeting? How did that, how did it go? What could I do better? Like yeah. you just have no time for that when you do back to back. And it's just, yeah, it's tough. There's a, there's a quote from, I think it's Leonardo da Vinci. He said, simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. I, <laughs> I love that cool. quote so much. It's, it's definitely been like a, a North star to kind of guide me along, but yeah, yeah. That, that's big. That's a really cool quote. And then the book Essentialism, I always, I kind of name drop a few books that were very impactful for me, but that one really helped me get very focused because whenever you say yes to something, you're saying no to something else. And a lot of times we say yes to so many mm. things and then our, we're over committing ourselves and we're not able to actually focus. Just having the blank space, having that time to think about stuff. I, I typically do, my Calendly has rules where I have like 30 minute breaks before another meeting can start. So that way, no matter what time it is, I can at least get a quick bite to eat. I can take the dog out. Um, I have time, you know, I can take the dog out, eat a quick bite in 15 or 20 minutes. And I still have time to like review and see, all right, what, what's the topic of today's call? You know, let me go through your bio. Let me see what you guys are working on. If I have any questions before we hit record, instead of just jumping on the call and being like, Hey, so what do you want to talk about? And like, what do you do? You know, like I already did my research for five or 10 minutes right before we hit uh, record or log into Zoom versus if I had five minutes in, in between this call and the last one, I wouldn't have had time to do any of that. Right. So uh, creating that space for yourself is super important. Definitely. Yeah. Just allowing yourself that time. For sure. So has there been any other breakthroughs in your entrepreneurial journey on like, how to really tap into your full creative potential, anything that you've noticed works best for you, like working out in nature or anything like that. Um, for me, I've, I've found success in just taking time to just to be still and to, uh, I do, I do a bit of meditation. I went to a, a convention over the summer over in Denver, just with, uh, I don't know if you've heard of Dr. Joe Dispenza. Yeah. But, uh, cool. Yeah. I went to one of his conventions and we just literally just a week of meditating. It was, it was the best. And that helps me a lot. Just taking time to sit down or, or lay down, whichever works and whichever I'm able to not fall asleep in, um, just to, to take time to be still, to just try to think about nothing and then go into just clearing my mind and then thinking about, okay, this is who I am. This is what I'm going to do just getting in the right, the right frame of mind and just kind of losing track of time and space, all this, all, you know, all that other meditation stuff, just, just taking some time to, to be still really, that helps me a lot. Yeah, and, uh, absolutely. And like ideas tend to come to you and, and stuff, and maybe you get that nugget where like right after your meditation, or even you pause it and like write it down real quick before you lose it. Uh, I've noticed mm -hmm. that that kind of stuff happens whenever you actually take time to be still and pause and and just think. And another thing that I've done that kind of may be helpful for those listening is just go into the voice memo app of your phone, or if you have some sort of audio recording app, I'll walk the dog or I'll like sit at a park bench and I'll literally just talk for five minutes. Or even in the other day, I had a 10 or 15 minute drive and I just started recording my thoughts. And I was like, Hey, so today is this date at this time. Um, things are going pretty well, you know, just talking to myself over how's everything doing. Uh, Cause usually we keep all our thoughts in our head and we don't really talk about 
all of the stuff that we're thinking about with others or our significant others or our family. We just kind of like keep it all up in our head. And so it helps to get it out and just speak and talk through things. And when you articulate it, podcasts help a lot for this too. It's almost like you can talk yourself into like, yeah, this is a good idea. Okay. This thing I'm working on, like, yeah, let's do this some more. I like this. This feels good. Or, you know, find your happy place or whatever. Like that. I love that as well. Just tap into what's working for you, you know? Exactly. Yeah. For a while. And I, I've kind of, I've kind of tapered off of this, but I need to, I really need to get back into it. It's kind of similar to what you said, but I would, I would just write it down like a, like a journal type thing, just yeah. write down my thoughts. But it's, I, it, it would be a lot easier if I did the voice memo, that would be a lot easier to just keep that, keep that routine going. So for yeah, sure. Voice, yeah. Just the journal. Just- and I like the journal idea too. I, I just reread this in, um, I think tools of Titans. If you've ever heard that book, um, Tim Ferriss kind of put together all these cool summaries from different Titans out there in their industry. And one of the people that he had interviewed was talking about the morning pages. I think the artists, the author's name is like Julia Cameron or something. I'm not exactly sure, but the, the book is called the artist's Mm -hmm. way. And they talk about writing the morning pages. So every morning it's like writing three free flowing pages just of your thoughts. And at first it's difficult. You're like, I can't write three pages. What am I going to write about? And you're, you might be writing the same stuff, but as you start to get into that habit, like amazing ideas and thoughts start to come out on the, on the, the paper that you wouldn't have otherwise thought of. So you have to actually invest in the time to either journal or record audio. Like, I think the most important thing here is that you're taking the time to think and you're creating that space, right? We talked about it earlier. Most people don't have space. They have back-to-back meetings and they never think about anything. Yeah. 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 And to your point as well, just, um, it's kind of a combination of the two of the meditating plus journaling is, um, gratitude journaling. I've done that in the past and that's, that's helped me a ton. Just writing down something that I'm grateful for and why, and just pausing on that and just thinking about it and feeling it and just getting in that, that emotional state and just, yeah, that, that helps me a ton. Just keeps me going, keeps me motivated for, for the day. Yeah, that's kind of like a, just a tank that's got to be recharged and just, <laughs> just redone over and over again. Just the classic. I got to get better at that. I've heard so many people talk about it and I do think through things that I'm grateful for. And occasionally I'll listen to a meditation and it's like, you know, thank you for today. Thank you for my life and the breath in my lungs, like those basic things. Um, Mm -hmm. Because otherwise we're always thinking about, I I do want to think about gratitude and stuff that I have instead of lack and the things that I don't have or the things that I still want, because it's just a different vibration, a different energy. So the gratitude Mm -hmm. journal too, there's, there's some guy I saw on Instagram the other day, and I guess he's writing all his goals in present tense as if it's already happened. And he's like, I'm so grateful and blessed that I live in my dream home. I'm so grateful and blessed that I have my dream body, even though he may not necessarily have those things yet. That, that makes your subconscious understand and believe that those things are on their way, which makes you show up in a different way, you know? Definitely. Yeah. And that's actually one thing I I did something similar to that. When I would do my gratitude, I'd start out with what I have, like what, what physically what I I can see that I have. And cause that would get me in that vibration. Mm-hmm. And then once I'm in that, in that state, then I would go to, I'm so blessed and I'm so happy and grateful now that this is happening in my life. And then I would just take a moment and think about that. Like just close my eyes and, and feel like feel the emotions that I would feel when that actually does physically manifest itself. That's super so just kind of similar. Yeah. That's I've seen that. I've seen that work. I've seen that work. Yeah. That's definitely a great hack that I've heard is just imagining i think i read that in dr joe Dispenza's book like imagine the feeling when that thing happens that you want to happen uh which is a little bit trippy because you're like how can i imagine the feeling if i don't have it i don't know how i'm going to feel but like that's the point of imagining like how do you think you're going to feel when you hit that goal and feel those feelings tony robbins talks about this too because the emotion is what a lot of people are missing even when they're meditating or visualizing they're just like yeah cool i have this nice house and i drive this dream car but they don't really feel it, which is that that key component to really ingraining those emotions inside of you is like, how do you invoke the feeling that most people probably don't? Yeah. Yeah. I think that's one thing that happens whenever, when you become an adult, it's just, you go more into the logical state and you just kind of forget, just elim- eliminate the feelings, but you want to control the feelings. Yeah. But you want to, you want to keep them. I mean, I've, 
I think they're awesome. A hundred percent. That's so true. As you get older, you just kind of, you focus more on the logic and you don't think about the things that maybe you used to dream about as a kid. Like I, I think I talked about this on a previous episode. When you're younger, you think you can be an astronaut or a firefighter, whatever you want to be like a superhero, you know? And then you get older and you're like, no, maybe I should just be an accountant. Like that's realistic. I can go to school and get my CPA or whatever. I shouldn't say that. My, my fiance is in accounting. So I'm like, I'm not trying to throw that under the bus. But like, <laughs> at some point, a, accounting's awesome, nice. by the way. I'm just not very good at it. <laughs> but at some point, like we we're kind of taught, you know, yeah, that sounds cool. You sure you want to be an astronaut, but realistically, you should study this instead. And we start thinking more logically and we stop, we stop believing in all the things that could be possible for us in a way. I mean, I noticed this in myself as well. And mm-hmm. so how do, how do we think bigger? How do we dream bigger? I think it all goes down to imagining what you're going to feel like after you achieve those goals that maybe you're working towards. Yeah. And, and identifying it. I think that's one of the hard things that I've seen, I've talked to a lot of people and they just tell me, you know, like I ask them, like, what do you, what do you really want? Like, what's, what's, what's your ideal life look like? And right. They just don't know. They've, Man. it's, that's, you got to identify it. What do yeah. you really want? That's a great question. And I mean, I feel like a lot of us are still searching for that too. Like if, if you ask most people, they probably have a hard time telling you, or they might tell you something that's like really not what they truly want. Cause then if you ask the next question of, all right, imagine you have those things. Are you happy? Or like, what's next? And maybe there, there's still something else that they want. Like they kind of have to go five wise deep in a way. And I, I guess I'm trying to figure that out too. Cause I've seen a lot of people, they've got, they've got kids and you see all of a sudden all they post about is like their kids and obviously their kids are their life now. And so I don't have any children and I don't know if we, if we want to have any or anything like we've talked about that. And so it's like, well, I'm not going to pour into little Johnny or whatever. So like, what is my true why? Obviously I want to be selfless and give to others. Um, so taking time, I just got to create some more time to think and space to think about that. Like, what is my why? If I could do my perfect day, what would that look like? Um, and it can change and evolve, right? Cause like what I'm doing now was my perfect day when I envisioned it a year or two ago, but now it's like, I want to do more. I want to achieve more. I want to impact more. So I got to revisit that perfect day exercise of, if I were to do everything I wanted to possibly do, what would I do today? You know? Yeah. Yeah. There's a, <laughs> there's a song I, I listen to a bunch. It's a, uh, it's by Wiz Khalifa. I think it's like too late. I think that's what it's called, but basically it's like, I think if, I, I know that if one. the curtains, cl- if, the, if the curtains closed and everything ended today, like, would you be satisfied with your life? Like, would you be happy with what you've done? And just, I think for me, it's just living every day. Like it's my last and just, yeah. Is that the there's, one where he's like, you can't take it when it's gone or when you're gone or something? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I, yeah I know that one. That one's one. a good one. I gotta, I gotta re-listen to some of the Wiz Khalifa stuff. Um, or even like the fast and furious one, like after Paul Walker passed away, um, that oh, yeah. song at the end, I think it was like with Charlie Puth and Wiz Khalifa or whatever. That that's a good song. too. Oh yeah. The see. Yeah. See you again. See you again. Yeah. Yeah. That is a good one. That one's definitely yeah. good. And it's like that, eye opening where you're like, man, you know, life's life's short. You can't take all this stuff with you when it's gone. So maybe your, your goals change a little bit. You're like, Hey, I wanted a, I still would like the luxury stuff, you know, sure. It'd be cool to have a Lamborghini, but like, you can't, you can't take it when you're gone, but how are you impacting others? Like, so whenever you are gone, your impact and legacy stays in the world, you know? Exactly. Yeah. You only get one bite at the apple. So, so true. I love how we, we changed from like, well, <laughs> and I talked about this at the beginning is like, we might shift around a little bit, but we, we moved from like staying focused and achieving your goals to like, man, you can't take it when you're gone. Like Wiz Khalifa songs. <laughs> so yeah, you're, we're all going to be dead tomorrow. No, <laughs> I mean, that's crazy. That, that is a little bit humbling when I've heard it's like, Hey, when you're freaking out and you think your world is falling apart, just think about how you're really like a speck of dust on this planet in this galaxy out of the millions or billions of years that everything's been around, it's like we live to 80 or 90 in most cases, whatever the average is. Like we're such a small dot on the timeline of everything that whenever that that thing happens and you're like, oh my God, life's over. Like someone broke up with me or that person stole $5,000 from me. You know, at the end of the day, it's not a big deal and you're going to be okay. And none of us are going to be here in a hundred years anyway, unfortunately. 
but hopefully our legacy will live on. Yeah. And so that kind of is humbling where you're like, you know, we really have nothing to lose. You might as well live your best life because we're only here for a relatively short amount of time. Yeah. Yeah. It is humbling. It is very humbling to think about. Keeps things in perspective for sure. It really does. Like we just think if this thing falls through, like my life is over. Or I just think of like Enron, the people who are involved with that. And like so many people just saw that as the end, you know, like I, I can't recover from this or like I've lost all my life savings. And like, so I remember, cause I'm from Houston, you know, had, I think I remember as a kid, one of my carpool buddies, dads, or both of his parents might've worked there and they like both lost their jobs. They were kind of in a tight spot. I didn't know this. I was like in third or fourth grade or whatever. I don't even remember the year. Um, but hearing the stories of people who were like caught up in that and they just like committed suicide and they just thought that there was no out, you know, but if they had kind of revisited this conversation we're having now of like on the grand scheme of things it's a speck of dust. Like you can recover and, you know, there, there's light at the end of the tunnel type thing. Um, but also kind of a little bit of that YOLO, like, like Wiz Khalifa would say, I think there's one of those songs where it's like, you know, you only live once type thing. I, I do love that. <laughs> don't blow it all. But like at the same time, it's like, enjoy it. You know, you don't know tomorrow's not guaranteed. Like go, go on that trip, get that massage, like take care of yourself, you know? Yeah. yeah I think this actually, at least from my, my entrepreneurial journey, it's, this is a big concept that has helped just has helped me a lot. Just, um, being risky enough to, to send it when I need to, but then at the same time, <laughs> love it. don't, don't be not, don't be naive. Don't be, don't be, don't be that stereotypical young person who just like puts everything on the line, burns the ships and doesn't even care if he has enough men to even come remotely close. Right. <laughs> That's <laughs> a good about, balance. <laughs> like, just, yeah. 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 But it's just, it kind of goes back to the age thing too. It's even like investing. I mean, you hear it all the time. Whenever you're investing in your younger, you can be more aggressive. You can put stuff in riskier investments that have higher returns. And then when you get older, like you obviously have less runway, assuming an average lifespan. And so you should switch your allocation to more balanced, conservative, like, lower you'll get lower interest rate payments like instead of getting the eight or ten percent you might get three or four but it's at least consistent and stable so i think yeah. you should kind of send it at that young age i mean you have nothing to lose and, and gary v talks about it too like so what if you if your thing doesn't work out or you fail like you could always get a job you know like the worst case scenario you can go back and get a job if you really had to if you lost everything financially your, your house your savings i mean that you're just starting from ground zero, but like you, you, it's not like you're really starting from ground zero actually, cause you have all the lessons and mm -hmm. you're going to, you're going to implement that a lot faster going forward because every failure, I think you learn a lot more from your failures than you do from your successes. You know, that's my, that's my perception from totally. what I've seen. No, I, I'm hundred percent on board with that. Yeah. Yeah. And just with, uh, with the point of, of not of like that, that fear of, of risking it, you know what I mean? Like, um, that's what I meant when I, earlier, when I said the terror barrier, it's just, yeah. you, you hit that and it's like, I don't want to go any farther because I don't want to risk anything. Uh, but at the same time, I've, I've found that the more security I have in something, the less freedom I have. And so that's why I went with the entrepreneurial routes because I just, I'm obsessed with freedom. Yeah. There's a <laughs> little so bit of fun too. I just, just the I unknown. Love, yeah. Yeah. I love having that time in, in the morning to, to go to the gym, to do what I got to do, to meditate, all that stuff. And then, yeah, not having to start work at 4.30. <laughs> yeah, I remember, so. I mean, just working full time and getting home. And by the time you get home at five after a full work day of meetings, and it's a long day in your mental space. Like your, if your brain is like a cell phone battery, by the end of the day, it's like 10, 20% maybe. Uh, some people may work till 10 p.m. I've heard the stories where they, people got four hours of sleep for five years and then they quit their corporate job. But like, realistically, I feel like if you're working full time and you're applying yourself at a full time position, you're pretty drained and tired mentally and probably physically too, by the end of the day. So whatever you work on is going to have less output than if you can wake up and focus while you still have like a hundred percent battery life in you, if that makes sense. Um, so using that example, entrepreneurship, like you said, the flexibility and freedom to wake up and work on what you want on your own schedule, it, it brings out so much more output than if you were to try to squeeze that in at the end of a workday. 
Yeah. Yeah. So lots of great stuff we're talking about here, man. Is there anything that we're missing? Any last nuggets or tips before we let people know where to find you? Any breakthroughs that you've had recently that you want to share? Um, I mean, just the classic business stuff, networking. Um, I think that's one of the, for, for young people listening, that is like, if, um, like as far as college goes, I think that's the most underrated aspect of college is networking, networking. the ability to network. Yeah. Um, not that you need to go to college to network, but if you're already there, like if you're not networking, you're doing something wrong. And the same thing, I know you're in a bunch of different networking groups, uh, masterminds. That's huge. Um, just again, I'm, I'm young, haven't seen as, as much as probably most people, but uh, from what I have seen, masterminds are essential for really achieving the goals, the, those, those high goals that, that, uh, that I have. And that I know a lot of people do have. So hundred percent networking, I'd say, I mean, I, I kind of devalue my education sometimes. And like, I didn't even, when I moved to Denver, I was kind of bummed when you said you went to a Dr. Joe Dispenza thing in Denver. Cause I'm like, man, I moved here in March and I didn't hear about that. I could have gone, that would have been cool. But uh, ah. next time, but when I moved here in March this year, I didn't even bring my my framed diploma from home. Like I left it at my parents' house, you know, I was like, Hey, you guys hold on to this. I don't even want to hang it up. Like, I don't care. <laughs> and so I think that kind of, I think more and more people feel that way where I'm like, yeah, it's cool that I have a degree. Yeah, sure. I put it up on LinkedIn. But when I think back to stuff that I learned in, in school, I can't think of really anything that I learned that I've really applied. It's all been self-education. And I just posted this on my Instagram story. I shared it. I think there was a post from like the, the Instagram page called wealth. And it said Mm. formal education. And the first picture was like busy streets in New York, you know, taxi cabs, people walking to and from the office. And then the bottom picture said self-education. It was like this beautiful, modern luxury, like mansion. And that, that kind of spoke to me where I'm like, yeah, formal education plugs you into the system of nine to five, working a job, climbing the corporate ladder. But if you take the time to learn and invest in yourself and network and masterminds and all those things, that maybe it's after hours, maybe people are going to turn on Netflix and you go to a networking event, right? That's the stuff that really pays off in the long run where you get to live the life that others don't live because you were willing to do the things that others weren't willing to do. Wow. Yeah. Those are words of wisdom right there. (laughs) Yeah. I think I stole that from Dave Ramsey. He was like, do what others will not do so that you can live like others can't or something like that. So we can, we can just say like uh, that I created it, but (laughs) Just change a word or two. Yeah, you know, Chris Bello quoting Thanks, some other guru. <laughs> <laughs> well, Nathan, this has been really fun, man. I've really exactly. enjoyed connecting with you and just talking about mindset and productivity and Wiz Khalifa and all kinds of stuff. Where can our audience go <laughs> to uh, to connect with you and to check out what you're up to? Yeah, yeah. so the biggest thing right now that we're doing is uh, we're establishing a community uh, based on the book and just being more open-minded to the concept of education. So yeah, the name of the book is Open-Minded Education. Um, it's on Amazon, Barnes and Noble. Um, as far as joining a, our community, it's, that's a, it's on Facebook, just Open-Minded Education Community. Um, cool. Just go ahead and send the, the invite to join the group and we'll get you in. And yeah, so that's, that's the, those are the biggest things right now. And like I said, we're working on um, just bigger things with the, the business and, those, those courses. So that's, that's kind of where you go to, to stay up to date on things. Perfect. I'll be sure to link all that up in the show notes, everyone listening, you know, connect with Nathan, reach out, see how you guys can get connected and keep an open mind. Right. I think that's beautiful. Open-minded education uh, because it's, it's so true. A lot of people close their minds off and they go into things and they're not willing to learn, or they think that they know it all, but whenever you have that open mind and you have that white belt mentality, that's where you're able to continue to learn and be like a lifelong learner. You know, you should never feel like you know it all because that's when you stop learning. Uh, And then one more quote that I heard that's really powerful that I want to leave people with is like the, the man who refuses to read has no advantage over the man who cannot read. I heard that. And I'm like, Whoa, you know, if you refuse to learn and to read or to, to be open-minded you have no advantage over someone who knows how to read, but they're just, they're not doing it, you know? Yeah, that's powerful. That's, yeah, yeah, that's big. 
Really good stuff. So, all right, your, your, your book and your Facebook group, I'll be sure to drop those links. But Nathan, once again, thank you for connecting. Thanks for reaching out and for jumping on the show. I had a good time. Awesome. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for having me, Chris. It was, it was great. For sure. We'll be in touch. Talk soon. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for being a listener to the show and for checking out my message. If you've been here for a while, I'm especially grateful for you. But if you're new here, thank you once again for being a listener. Just wanted to let you know, I help people buy, sell, or rent real estate across the nation in the U.S. I probably could even help you across the world, but it just gets a little more difficult with time zones and setting up times to chat. If you have any questions at all, shoot me a DM on Instagram. My handle is chrisbello underscore, or you can also go to my website, chrisbello.com slash real estate. Again, that is chrisbello.com slash real estate. Happy to help any way that I can. And thank you once again for being a listener.